Let's talk about the George Zimmerman case a little bit. I've been following the George Zimmerman Trayvon Martin trial pretty closely. We've seen the, the prosecution call a number of witnesses. The prosecution has rested. Now the defense literally as as we're taping the show, I think I can see over uh, are talking to defense witness. Uh, the, the defense is now calling witnesses, which then are cross examined by the prosecution. I want to focus on one very specific thing here because there, there's so much to talk about when it comes to the George Zimmerman case. And I want to just focus on one specific thing and lay it out for you, the audience, and you tell me what you think. We've gotten statements from both George Zimmerman and his friend Mark Osterman. Now, Mark Osterman's the guy who is George Zimmerman's friend who advised him to get a gun, who advised him on which type of gun to get, who advised him on how to carry that gun and who is also a federal air marshal, something that many individuals have emailed me saying this guy is protecting us in the sky. That's a different question. That's not the question for this segment. They've both said that uh, the gun that George Zimmerman was carrying on the night of the of the the killing of Trayvon Martin, it was concealed and that Trayvon Martin attempted to grab it. In other words, George Zimmerman said that in the videos that we have of him talking to investigators, and Mark Osterman said that's also the story George Zimmerman told him. Now, Trayvon Martin going for the gun allegedly caused Zimmerman to try to wrestle control of the gun away from Trayvon Martin, take the gun out of its holster and then fire one round into Trayvon Martin's chest. So let's examine this. OK, I want to show you the picture from evidence from evidence that is George Zimmerman's gun and holster. Now, George Zimmerman was carrying a Caltech nine millimeter concealed and it was concealed in one of these inside the waistband holders. That's called an IWB. This is that gun and holster from evidence. Now, most of these IWB holsters are positioned slightly behind the back. In other words, not on on your side, but kind of towards the back, kind of above the buttock. So if you imagine in the case uh, of George Zimmerman, it was positioned kind of above his his right cheek, if you understand what I'm saying, Lewis. And the gun and the holster were covered with a long shirt. Uh, uh, in Zimmerman's case, he says he was wearing both a shirt and a jacket on that particular night. Now, here's a photo of George Zimmerman himself. This is Zimmerman himself when he did the recreation video of what happened, motioning to where the gun was and how he drew it from the holster. Now, just to give you some points of reference, here are some here's a picture of a different inside the waistband holster and kind of how it's positioned on the body. And you can notice that the pistol grip is pointed away from somebody who's in front of you. So the way that it sits in that IWB holster, the the grip points towards your towards your spine, so to speak, as opposed to towards your belly button, if that makes sense. So Zimmerman claims he was on his back and that he had Trayvon Martin on top of him, hitting him, smothering him, smashing his head into the sidewalk. How could George Zimmerman possibly have drawn the gun with Trayvon Martin on top of him. I mean, Zimmerman claims that he was pinned down and he was physically incapable of getting out from under Trayvon Martin. Now, that means he would have not only his own weight, the weight of George Zimmerman on top of his gun, because it is in one of these inside the waistband holsters, but also Trayvon Martin's weight, admittedly under 160 pounds, but still an additional 160 pounds on top of his gun. How was George Zimmerman able to get his hand on the grip of his gun with Trayvon Martin on top of him? Zimmerman had to be laying on his gun if he was on his back, as he claims. Zimmerman says that the shirt got pulled up. His shirt got pulled up at some point during the struggle, and that allowed Trayvon Martin to see the gun. Remember, George Zimmerman was wearing a shirt and a jacket over his gun. Did both the shirt and jacket get pulled up together to expose the gun? If that was the case, wouldn't the gun or the holster have been wet? There would have been. Remember, it was wet. They were they were uh, it was a rainy night. Wouldn't there be some abrasions on the gun or maybe some grass stains or some grass embedded on the gun? Did the police test for grass residue? I mean, it looks pretty clean and dry in the evidence photo. Something about this makes absolutely no sense to me. It is simply not believable that Trayvon Martin was able to easily see George Zimmerman's gun when he was on top of him. Remember, Lewis punching, slamming, smothering him. And then how did he get that gun? 
how did George Zimmerman, that is, get that gun out if he had his own weight and that of Trayvon Martin's on top of the gun? It just does not add up to me. It is kind of strange. Um, you know, it's is it possible that he just managed to lift one shoulder up and kind of reach behind himself behind him to grab it? I mean, if that's the case, how was Trayvon going for it? But I mean, what do you tell someone when you kill someone with your gun who was unarmed? Uh, what do you tell the police? Of course, you're going to tell them that that person went for your gun because that's pretty much the only reason you have to shoot them with it. Um, so it's, it's the perfect excuse. Uh, I don't know if it's true or not, but I would, I would put my money on uh, it not being true. We're going to see if this line of questioning comes up in the Zimmerman trial.